like a farmer needs healthy soil to grow healthy crops, we need healthy soil to maintain our health. And there's a physical soil, a chemical soil, and an emotional soil. Physical soil can be hurt by injuries, surgery, lack of exercise, will impact the physical soil. Your chemical soil is affected by toxins in the air, water, food, gluten, heavy metals, pesticides, root canals, viruses, COVID, COVID vaccines. All these toxins can accumulate in your body and then your body doesn't work as well as it should. Now, if you look at a uh, traditional medicine's basic workup is physical x-rays, CAT scans, biopsies, MRIs, imaging, looking at the structure of your body, chemical blood tests, but there's a deeper electrical level that we look at here. Like a cardiologist does electrical, an EKG for electrical heart. A neurologist looks at an EEG and an EMG for electrical brain and nerve muscle. Uh, my practice involves looking at your electrical liver, kidneys, pancreas, adrenals, thyroid, with the idea that your body is an orchestra and these organs and glands are instruments in that orchestra. Some are sluggish and out of tune. You can't see sluggish on a blood test. You can see an inflamed liver, but you can't see a sluggish liver. Some of the organs are strong and in tune. If we can get everything that's sluggish strong, the orchestra plays better music. What I'm trying to get to you is, is that when you have a diagnosis of cancer, some of the organs are not working as efficiently as it should. The orchestra is not playing in tune as it should. And toxins are accumulating in your body. So the next step is, well, how do we get the toxins out? And there are three major organs or drainage systems uh, that need to be stimulated. There's the lymphatic system, the liver. And we know the lymph nodes by the glands that swell up and get a sore throat, but there's lymph in your breast, armpit, dollar, and pelvic area. And so toxins leave the cells going to the lymphatic system. The lymph is very elaborate, just like your blood vessels. And it flows up this way where the lymph empties under your collarbone into the big veins. Eventually these toxins will get to the liver and the liver can either take it into the intestines and out the stool or back into the blood, kidneys and out the urine. So liver, lymph, kidney drainage systems allow toxic removal through the uh, stool and the urine. In my practice, I tell people to take lemon in their water, uh, juice vegetables for the liver. Wheatgrass juice, as you know, helps the liver. Kidneys are helped by lots of good water. Uh, the rule being that basically you want to drink half of your weight in water per day. Long-term water should not be distilled because distilled water is dead water. You need water with minerals. Uh, and there's plenty of water out there with minerals. Mm -hmm. Kidneys are helped by asparagus, parsley, pomegranate, good vegetables there. And the lymph is helped by no dairy, deep breathing, and exercise. A trampoline, rebounder, uh, mini trampoline, very effective. Jumping rope, very effective. Certainly deep breathing, very, very effective. So liver, lymph, and kidney drainage are essential. When they're not working well or working uh, inefficiently, the body says there's a call to the hormonal system, the glands that secrete hormones, to secrete more hormones to strengthen the liver, lymph, kidney drainage systems. And the, the three key hormones are insulin by the pancreas, thyroid hormone, and the adrenal hormones. Uh, and especially the adrenal hormones. The adrenals are the first organ affected by stress, physical stress, mental stress, emotional stress, nutritional stress, person who eats gluten is sensitive to gluten, environmental stress, a lot of EMFs out there, especially in electric cars, of course. Uh, but all cars these days have very advanced uh, computer systems, which you can't really avoid. Infectious stress, bacteria, virus, yeast infections. So whenever there's a stressor, the adrenals secrete stress hormones. If the stressor persists for a long period of time and or several stresses occurring at the same time, the adrenals keep pumping out. The adrenals eventually get tired. Your ability to handle stress is reduced, stress is no longer a challenge, stress becomes a threat. You overreact to little things, you go, what did I do that for? It wasn't that big a deal. And picture you wake up in the morning and your brain is having a talk with your adrenals and your brain says, look, I got a lot on my plate today and I need your adrenals to secrete hormones to get me through the day. Well, your adrenals say, look, I'm tapped out, I got nothing to give you. Or you're gonna get anxious because you don't have the resources to deal with the demands of the day. So frequently anxiety, even though it's interpreted up here, 
starts back here. And as you know, the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys. So I'd say that uh, everybody needs adrenal support. Thyroid, really, really key. And the other key is insulin. And insulin uh, is made by the pancreas. Pancreas basically does two things. Makes insulin to regulate blood sugar, but also produces digestive enzymes uh, to digest the protein, the fat, and the starch in your food. And so pancreatic enzymes, by the way, can be very helpful, both in helping digestion. And if you take them on an empty stomach, they have a uh, anti-inflammatory effect. So the key major hormones, insulin, thyroid, and the adrenal hormones, especially cortisol made by the adrenal.